the strength to even hold yourself up, you're gonna wanna focus on getting that shoulder strength, you know, a, a core to, to balance upside down, even if it's a, a, against the wall, because just because you're against the wall it doesn't mean your shoulders are gonna be able to withstand the weight of your body being directly over you. So focusing on movement patterns, um, prioritizing what is the most important at the beginning of the workout. So that's what you're gonna place at the beginning. You get that out of the way, the easier things go towards the bottom and that's what you would, that's how you would place it. Uh, we could go into more detail exactly what a plan would look like. I can give you one of the plans that I have that will, that's what I'll do. I'll put that somewhere um, around the video where you can click on it and check it out. Or, and uh, also plans that I've, yeah, I've given to clients as well. And you can check that out and see exactly what it looks like based on priority. And if you have your own plan that you've tried out, you know, you could send it in there and check it out, compare it, see what the differences are. Um, and see if you can mix it up and make it more effective. Now, like I like to say, there's many, you know, there, there's a wrong way of doing things, but there's many right ways. So just because it doesn't look identical, doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, you can kind of tell a plan that will not get you anywhere based on, you know, the, the contents that it has. So if you don't, if you only work in, you know, chest, that's it, every day, chest, 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 chest. That is an obvious indication that that is not a balanced structure, structurally balanced plan, and you're not working every major muscle group. The chest is not the only muscle group in your, your body. Um, you have legs, calves, everything. I'm not gonna go through that again, but you have all those major muscle groups to make sure you hit, and to create structural balance, you wanna make sure you do that. And training movement patterns also helps in creating structural balance. Um, Psychomotor skills, again, having that understanding that it's a mind-muscle connection. Practicing repetition of movements allows you to get the, the, the mind to get familiar with how the muscles need to be. Uh, and that contraction takes place according to what movement you're, you're attempting to perform. So, just to go over it again, um, prioritize, priority. Uh, a good plan if you're going for hypotrophy Anywhere from, I would say, six to eight weeks, that's when you're gonna to start to see changes within you know, your body. Obviously, it, it differs depending on the person, but that should be the time that you're looking to have there. So, if a plan, you're on a plan for a while and you're not seeing changes, you should probably give it a switch up. Uh, I like to maybe, well, me personally, every you know, six weeks, uh, based on what my goal is, but you know, same thing, six to eight weeks, that's a, a, a good um, time, time frame to look at right there. So keep that in mind. Uh, priority, you know, structural balance, make sure you're working on all the different uh, movement patterns. So there's six to eight of them, you know, depending on what you're doing, six to eight. So pushing, pulling, linear, uh, you know, that, yeah, hip, knee dominant, those are the ones you're looking to achieve right there. Um, other than that, we're gonna move on to the next lesson and we're gonna see what else we have in store there. So take the notes. Keep in mind six to eight um, movement patterns, six to eight weeks on a plan, uh, depending on what your goal is, but that's a good time to give uh, a plan adequate time to you know, kick in. Uh, if you're doing it too short, you're not giving your body enough time to adapt and understand what's going on. You're gonna see changes, but not optimum changes if you're going too short. Too long can equally be, um, you know, it, Sometimes, I mean, I go stay on the same plan for two months, three months sometimes. It, it depends uh, on how I'm, how I'm feeling. Or I said two to eight, six to eight weeks. Yeah, so uh, three months and sometimes I just like to try it out, you know, and when time isn't a factor and it's just me wanting to uh, increase and try things out, experiment on my body, I'll run a plan a little bit longer than I'm used to doing it and see if, okay, am I plateauing? Uh, are these changes drastic, something I haven't seen before? And, you know, taking those notes. That's why it's important to have a plan that you can follow. Uh, collecting, well, I think, well, next lesson we'll talk about, you know, collecting baseline data. Because baseline data, if you don't know where you are, where you started, and if you're not keeping track of it, there's gonna be no way for you to know. It's just what you, you know, think in your mind. You're like, okay, was I able to do 10 push-ups when I start? I'm doing 100 now. And I mean, 
it's better to have a, a, a frame of reference where you could look back and see, man, I'm making great progress. You know what you're doing. You know what you need to continue to do or what you need to change in order to continue making progress. So we're going to talk about collecting baseline data for your own personal progress in the next lesson. And let's go ahead and get it going, guys. See you in the next lesson. Wow.